combinations of functions is the title of chapter 9. Today we're going to look at 9.1 and 9.2. 9.1 is basically an exploration lesson where you look at different graphs and try to figure out if you added a couple of them together, what would they look like if you added them together. And it's just a lot of reflecting. So there's really not much to say about it. Um, I'll discuss it kind of as I go through some of these other exercises from 9.2, which has to do with addition and subtraction of, of functions. So we're going to combine them by adding and subtracting them together. So I'm going to start with something really basic here. Let's say I had two lines, y equals 2 and y equals 4. Now, um, you do know that this is a line um, that the domain is real numbers. X is an element of real numbers, and you might say, oh, well, just a minute, where's the X in this equation? Well, you could say this is X to the power of zero, right? That's that's where we, where we cover off on that one. So now if I said, if I wanted to add Y equals 2 and Y equals 4 together, what would I get? Well, that's pretty easy because you're talking about adding the heights of the functions. Okay, so the height. So if I add 2 and 4 together, I would end up with this line up here, right? This would be um, y equals 6 if I added them together. So if I multiplied them together, I'd have y equals 8. I could subtract them, get y equals 2. And that's pretty much all you're doing on the most basic level. So looking at something just a little bit more difficult, let's say we had the graph f at x equals x squared, which as you know is just a nice parabola. g at x is equal to x, which is the nice um, line with a slope of 1 that has nice points, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. And say I wanted you to um, graph the new function that you would get if you added these two things together. Now there's two ways of looking at this. I can say, oh, okay, well, um, I can make a table of values for x squared. And I could say, okay, let's say if I used x values of minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2, and I'm going to tell you what x squared would be. So that would be 4, 1, 0, 1, and 4. And what would the x, the um, g at x be if x was, so this is when g at x, so this would be minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2, right? So g at x equals x, so minus 2 equals minus 2. Now, if I wanted to add them together, so if I did f plus g at x, all I'd have to do is combine these two numbers together. So 4 minus 2, 1 minus 1, 0 plus 0, 1 and 1 is 2, and 4 and 2 is 6. So now I could graph these points. Um, it might be a little difficult for you to figure out what it should exactly look like if you just plotted those points on the graph here. So let's say I did minus 2 and 2. Let me change colors here. So minus 2 and 2. That shouldn't be on a line here. My graph is not very accurate. Minus 2 and 2, minus 1 and 0. And then I have 0 and 0. And then I have 1 and 2. 1 and 2. And then I would have 2 and 6. So that's 2 and 4, 2, 5, 2, 6. So it's going like this, right? Now, if you weren't a good student who didn't know your work, you might wonder what happens to the graph between these two zeros. And I think you know that really this becomes a new parabola. So the reason that is, is because if I looked at this algebraically and I just said, okay, what's... Um, x squared plus x, that would be f plus g at x, right? I'm just adding them, x squared here plus x, and you would know to factor that, and that would give you zeros of 0 and minus 1, same thing, and it's a parabola, so in between here would be my minimum value. So this is more the, this is the algebraic method, algebraic and this way here would be just using a table of values. Okay, so let's look at another one here. Um, this is, let's call this g at x, and that's going to be the root of x. 
and this can be f of x equals x squared. And I ask you to add these two functions together. So the problem with adding functions is that in order for you to add them together, they have to have the same domain. How could I possibly add something here when I have nothing for this graph when x is less than zero? Okay, so you have to look at the domains first. So the domain of f at x, you know what the domain of f at x is? It's a parabola. So I would just say x is an element of real numbers. But the domain of my g at x here, this is um, the radical function. I can't take the square root of negative numbers, so it would be x is greater than or equal to 0. x is an element of real numbers. So that means the domain of the functions, when I add them together, has to be where they intersect, which is only this part here. So the domain of f plus g at x is going to be the domain equals x is greater than or equal to 0, x is an element of real numbers. So every time you go about um, adding some functions together, you have to make sure that they are going to have points that are on both of the graphs. It just makes sense, right? How can I add this together with this when I don't have this? So this part here becomes irrelevant for my combination function of x squared and root x. So now you could go through and um, find some values for x. Let's make just a quick little table of values here. So we'll have x, x squared, root x, and then f plus g at x. So let's just make a quick little table here. Now we know our domain has to start at 0. So lots of zeros going around there. And if I put in x is 1, I would get 1. Square root of 1 is 1. And 1 plus 1 would be 2. And I'm going to jump to something that works for the root of x because I don't want to add in these little root things, right? So let's do 4. So 4 squared is 16. The square root of 4 is 2. And this would be 18. So you might guess that it's going to be a function that's going to go up very rapidly here. So at 1, we're at 2. So it goes 0, 2. And at 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, we're way up here at 16. So it's going to go way up like this. And that's how you could sketch it. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the questions like you might have in your textbook where they give you two functions and they give it as a set of coordinates. So here's all my points. This is f at x. If you graphed it, it would just be a series of four little points and g at x would be a series of four little points. Now if I wanted to add them together, I have to look for points that have the same x value. If they don't have the same x value, I can't add them together. So I can't add these. I can add these ones. I can't add these, but I can add these ones. So these are the only ones that I can add together here. So f plus g at x would be, you don't add the ones together. You don't add the, the x's, right? You're just adding the heights of the functions. So 1 and 3 and 1 and 7 go to 1 and 10. And 6 and 9, 6 and 2 will go to 6, 11. And there you go. There's your combination. You add it up at x and g at x. Okay, and one more example here um, where I have the function of 10 to the x. So I have an exponential function and I'm going to add the logarithmic function to it. So the question is, what is f plus g at x? Now, in order for you to add them together, if I said, well, what, what's the domain? What's the restriction here going to be? I need to know what the domain is. So the domain of 10 to the x. What can you put in for x and get an answer? Well, anything, right? So the domain is x is an element of real numbers. However, for a logarithmic function, you know the log function has to be greater than or equal to 0. So this domain for this one would be x is greater than or equal to 
No, it can't be zero. We can't take the log of zero. 10 to, 10 to some number gives you zero? No. So it has to be greater than negative five and x is an element of real numbers. So that means the domain for f plus g at x is going to be this one. x is greater than negative 5. x is an element of real numbers. Okay, so that's where they would overlap. This is all of the numbers, but this is only numbers greater than negative 5. So the function, the com combined function, must be greater than negative 5. And that's about it for 919.2. And um, if you haven't subscribed, you can still subscribe. I know your advanced functions is almost over, but how about some calculus next? Um, also, in 9.3, we're going to multiply and divide, which is going to be another really easy lesson. And then we get into a few little word problems. So this is a, a really quick little chapter to finish off your advanced functions course. All the best.